This is Twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. Back the phones we go. Line two. Mike Highland, California. Hi, Mike. Hey, Leo. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Hey, love your show. Always, you. always listen. And uh, I've heard you talk about speak about uh, VPNs. Yes, I'm concerned about security with my uh, my cell phone and my tablet when I'm on public Wi-Fi. But I also need, I seriously need a password manager, and I'm hoping I can find one with both password manager and VPN combined. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody does that. What a good idea that would be. Um, I mean, I've got so many email addresses and so many accounts online, and I'm consist constantly, constantly having to change, uh, you know, uh, do forgot password and resetting it. And, oh yeah, you and really they, need it. They won't let you use one you've used in the past, and they keep changing their rules on what characters you can can and can't use. And I'm just so sick of it. If you never leave the house, I want to say something because I think uh, we talk about password managers a lot. These are the idea is is it's a vault that you can keep your passwords in. It will generate passwords for you. It will generate passwords that are completely unmemorable. Usually that's very good. The more random, the harder to crack. So long, strong passwords. And then it remembers them so you don't have to, but you have to remember one master password that unlocks it. Uh, that is such a good idea. But I think it's also a little complicated. And there are people who only use a computer at home. They don't They don't take a laptop or, out or, or a phone out. And so for them, it'd be fine to write it in a book, as long as nobody has access to your house, and keep it, you know, by your computer. Just put them in a book and keep it by your computer. But a password manager is such a nice thing to have. It's such a convenience. It's just a little bit complicated to set up. And so for people who say, oh, I'm not going to use a password manager, okay. But but the, the really important thing is not to reuse your passwords. Have a new password for every site and make make a note of it. The less memorable, the better. So I don't know of any VPN combined with a password manager. That's uh, that's mm -hmm. an interesting thought. We have sponsors in both categories, ExpressVPN and LastPass. And, and as you know, I'm very careful. We're very picky with our sponsors. So I do recommend both of those as good choices. The VPN is completely different. Oh, wait a minute. Now somebody's saying Dashlane has both. All right. Dashlane's a very good password manager. It's not LastPass, okay. but that's okay. It's a it's a very nice password manager. Most of the commercial password managers are nice because they combine, they work on all the platforms, so you can keep them on your desktop, on your phone, and all that stuff. Let me see if Dashlane has a VPN. If it does, that's the answer to your question. That'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, certainly have no problem recommending Dashlane as a password manager. They're 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 very good. They actually are very aesthetically pleasing. All the password managers have a little bit of an issue. Yeah, wait a minute, look at that. Dashlane encrypts your online activity. And yes, they have a VPN. Now, I wonder if it's the same. You have to have... 256-bit encryption? Uh, yeah, they're all going to be strong encryption. There's no point in doing it. It's so easy to do a VPN with strong encryption. There'd be no reason not to, unless you were setting up a, a bogus VPN of some kind. There's no point in doing that. Actually, the... Let me address that a little bit, too. When you're choosing a VPN, uh, the whole privacy security issue that you're worried about as you as you wander around and with your smartphone or in a coffee shop uh, goes away locally, but then is put on the, on the VPN, right? You're just kicking the can down the road. That VPN now knows everything that the local Wi-Fi did. And so if they're uh, shady, then... <laughs> then you haven't solved a problem. You might have made it worse. So really important to choose a VPN that is privacy-focused, trustworthy, secure. Dashlane's a good company. I would expect their VPN to be very good. So um, there you go. There's a good solution. Awesome. Um, Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I, this is all new to me. You do have to get the premium version, not the free version of Dashlane. Yeah, no, I would never go with the free version. Yeah, especially of a VPN. It. Dashlane's not expensive. It's 60 bucks a year. Five bucks a month, that's not bad. A little more than LastPass, but you're getting uh, you're getting a VPN thrown in. So that's actually less than most VPNs. Great. Good deal. Thank you so much. Thanks Keep for thanks for the call. I will. Thank you. I knew what you were about to say. <laughs> I will keep up the good work. I hope you were going to say that. Uh, yeah, so Password Vault is like that book, you know. In fact, I even saw, I was at uh, Walmart, I think, and I saw... In the, uh, maybe it was at Staples, 
they had, uh, you know, they have notebooks. And one of them said passwords. Maybe not the best idea to have a book name with a title on the front that says passwords for your password manager. Maybe just a little nondescript little black book that you keep in a drawer that's not obvious locked if possible, right? Thing is, if, if you never go out of the house, you always have that book with you. That's as good as a password manager. But you have to make sure nobody breaks into your house. And that book has the same problem all password managers have. If somebody gets the book or the password vault, they get all your passwords. It's a single point of failure. Suddenly, whoa, they got everything. So maybe a password vault's a little bit better because even if the bad guys were to break in and, you know, to last pass or dash lane or one password's servers and steal all the password vaults, they'd be so heavily encrypted, so protected that they couldn't do anything with them, which is not something you could say for the notebook unless you write everything backwards. That wouldn't stop anybody for very long. Really like the other part of a password manager that I really like that a notebook doesn't do is it generates good passwords for you. And you can make them long since you don't have to remember them. Make them as long as the site will allow. I, I often make mine 20, 30, 40, 50 characters because I don't have to remember them. Long is, makes it harder to guess. If you're doing that at that point, you're, 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 you're pretty safe from brute force attacks. The next thing you want to do after Password Manager, as long as I'm talking about this, I should mention this, is two-factor authentication. And certainly do that on your Password Manager. That means not only do you need a password, a login and a password to get into the Password Manager, the first time you use it on a device, you'll also need some way, other way of proving you are who you are, who you say you are. That's a second factor of authentication, another, a second way of proving your uh, identity. And it's so, if you've got a bank account, if your bank allows it, do it. If, you're, if Google does, Twitter does, Facebook does, turn it on. Turn it on. Amazon does. Turn it on. It's a little less convenient. Again, it's only the first time you use a device. It's just the first time. But it's, it is a huge roadblock to hackers. You know, the, the CEO of Twitter got hacked the other day. And then a, and then a, a, a TV a celebrity got hacked right after by the same group, the Chuckling Squad. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, if they'd had two-factor on their systems, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have gotten hacked. Actually, they did get hacked in a weird way. It's one of the reasons uh, I tell people not to use, if possible, most banks, unfortunately, still use text messages for your second factor. So you log into the bank and it says, great, what's your phone number? We're going to send you a text message and you get six digits or 12 digits or whatever you enter it in. And they say, yep, that's you because you had your phone. The problem is this thing called SIM jacking, which the chuckling squad apparently used against the CEO of Twitter and the television star. They called the phone company and said, oh, I'm, I moved. I have a new, I lost my phone. Can you send me a new SIM card? Or let me, uh, let me, I have a SIM card. Let me get, uh, assign my number to it, something like that. And often it's the case the phone company will go, okay, yeah, sure. They're not as careful as they ought to be. And now they have your phone number. That's how they were able to tweet as the CEO of Twitter. They just had his phone number. And Twitter, in their stupidity, <laughs> said that's enough just as long as you got that phone number that's okay that's good enough for us we don't need a password <laughs> that's good enough for us two factors so uh twitter has turned off at least temporarily uh the use of a text message as a second factor that's fine there's put an authenticator app on your phone and use it i use authy it's free a-u-t-h-y i love it you can put it on all your devices it'll generate the code for you in a secure fashion you're much much safer Leo Laporte, the tech guy.